Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Here's how I would sell the European Union, if I had to. Indonesia, EU sign agreement on trade in legally harvested timber. Italian business unions warn political turmoil risks troika. EU policymakers agree on a new CAP. Plus, the foreign beggars that Britain cannot stop. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, from our homepage, Sean Thomas, relaxing somewhere on the Greek island of Crete, writes, If you want somewhere symbolic to think about Europe, you can do worse than Crete, where I write this. Because Crete is where Europe was born. Crete was where the Minoans built the first European civilizations. But Crete has been pivotal at other times. It has been assailed by just about every European invader in history, from Romans to the Ottomans to Legigold tourists from Smolensk. In 1943, the Nazis joined in, scything through Cretan villages in revenge for British commando attacks. The Greek and German hostility has been renewed of late, as Greece has suffered through Eurogeddon. A few days ago, I saw a bar owner greet his German customers with a Hitler salute and a finger moustache. The German tourist responded with a fixed smile which said, Yeah, yeah, very funny. Next time we start with missiles. Indonesian Foreign Minister Zukulfi Hassan, European Commissioner for the Environment Janez Pochoknik, and the Lithuanian Minister of Environment Valentius Marozoni signed the Indonesian European Voluntary Partnership Agreement on Forest Law, Enforcement Governance and Trade on Monday in Brussels. The FLEGT VPA aims to halt the trade of illegal timber and ensure that only verified legal timber and timber products are imported to the EU from Indonesia. Indonesia is the first country in Asia to sign the FLEGT-VPA with the EU and is by far the largest timber exporting country to do so. The signing represents the culmination of six years of intensive and constructive negotiations involving the private sector, civil society and governments from both parties. Now, quietly, that took 47 takes to get through the first paragraph. This is being sold up as a positive, but it's worth looking at it from another perspective. Having just legislated across all the forestry in Europe, see our legislation section for the regulations and directives, the EU is seeking to control and exploit resources beyond its borders. The kleptocrats call this sustainability, but really it's just relocating the problem somewhere else. Remember, what constitutes legal in the EU can and often is very different outside of it. See Tartar Industries and Corvus Steel for further examples. Italian unions and employers voiced concerns on Monday that the political crisis in Rome could lead to Italy being placed under special administration by European authorities and the International Monetary Fund. Luigi Angeletti, head of the UIL union, said if the chaos created the, by the breakdown of Enrico Letta's government persisted, Italy risked following Greece in being placed under special oversight by the European Commission, the European Central Bank and the International Monetary Fund, also known as the Troika. OK, heads up folks, this is really way, worth paying attention to. Essentially, the article is saying that at any moment the European Union can and probably will seize control of governance over Italy in the same way that it has done with Greece and Cyprus. Now, if this goes ahead in short shrift, then my prediction that Ireland will be the next nation to be absorbed by the economic meltdown will be proved incorrect. Sheesh, I wait with bated breath for the news from the ECB banking audit in Ireland. Meanwhile, Italians will be popping on the frilly bonnets and caps and clumbering aboard the handcart for a bumpy ride to hell.
European Union policymakers on September 24th reached final agreement on a new version of the Common Agricultural Policy that will cut direct payments to the largest farmers and provide money for rural development programmes. The new version of the CAP, which was finalised by negotiators for the European Commission, the EU Council of Ministers and the European Parliament, must still be formally adopted by the Parliament in November and the Council in December, but is expected to go into effect on January the 1st. The latest CAP reform is the first in which the European Parliament has played a powerful role, according to Paolo de Castro, a parliamentarian from Italy who chairs the European Parliament Agriculture Committee. We proved that Parliament could make the reform better and more democratic, whilst working swiftly enough to ensure that farmers will benefit on time from the new CAP, de Castro said. EU Agriculture Commissioner Dociano Ciolos said he was delighted that we have now been able to finalise the reforms as a whole. More democratic, eh? I believe, sir, you are confusing broadening the distribution of resources in a fair and alternately assessed way with the idea of direct representation, freedom of expression and equality under the law. You see, Mr De Castro, my cheeky little Italian kleptocrat puppet, one is a policy mandate set out by a benevolent or benign I'll let the audience choose the intent, EU Commission dictatorship, the other is the idea of the democratic rights of a free people. I think you will find the two concepts significantly different when you pull your head out of the sand and stop trying to blag everyone with your deceptive lies. The case described as a Carousel for Career Beggars highlights the difficulties that Britain faces in keeping the European Union nationals out of the country, even when they come here to beg. Last night, one Conservative MP said Britain was effectively funding short holidays for beggars in Romania, while powerless to stop them coming back. The London Council, where the beggars operate, which estimates it spends more than £500,000 a year tackling the problem, branded the situation a farce and called for tighter border controls. Now, in July, more than 20 Roma were given tickets for flights and coaches back to Romania and being rounded up in raids by immigration officers and police on their encampment in Park Lane in London's West End. Tickets were supplied by the UK border agency and homeless charity, also funded by the taxpayers. Well, let's look on the bright side. As of January the 1st, 2014, the council won't need to spend that money at all, and nor will the immigration and border control have to pay for flights to send them home because then they'll be able to stay wherever they like, for as long as they like, under protection of EU law. Isn't it just amazing how these problems simply get cleared away once the EU gets involved? Today in our video library, whilst we're on the topic of immigration, if you think things are bad in the UK, check out this video of what is happening in Italy. So, what do you think about immigration? Has the EU got it wrong with its policy of free movement, integration and the idea of removing national identities and cultures in favour of a European national identity? Perhaps national cultures are not thinking big enough. Perhaps it's time in a globalised world that every European citizen should have full and unfettered access across all member states along with basic welfare and social services. We're planning a broader coverage of the immigration issue and, of course, we'll be tackling this difficult topic in Critical Thinking, our live on-air show. So please do send us your emails, your thoughts and feelings. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>